equal justice under law. It's a bedrock principle of our American democracy. But every day in the nation's capital, thousands of people are denied equal access to justice simply because they cannot afford a lawyer. For more than 40 years, the DC Bar Pro Bono Center has mobilized volunteer lawyers to deliver legal information, advice, and representation where and when it's needed most. Together, we help people who have been left out to understand the law, assert their rights, and seek justice in court. In neighborhoods that have been left behind, we strengthen nonprofit organizations and small businesses that are vital to the economic life of their communities. We stand with people to protect and preserve what matters most, their families, their homes, their futures. Equal access to justice transforms lives. Join us. Good evening, everyone. I'm Becky Troth, Executive Director of the DC Bar Pro Bono Center. On behalf of our board of directors, our pro bono committee, our staff, and especially our clients, thank you for joining us this evening. The President's Reception is a 27-year tradition that allows us to thank our generous donors and our wonderful volunteers who devote thousands of hours to pro bono service. Your contributions of time, treasure, and talent have made the Pro Bono Center the largest provider of pro bono legal services in the district. Each year, with your help, we serve more than 20,000 individuals, nonprofits, and small businesses unable to afford a lawyer. Although we can't gather in person this year, I raise my glass to salute all of you who make this work possible. I also want to recognize specifically our talented and dedicated staff who adapted virtually overnight to remote operations overcoming countless obstacles to continue serving our clients during the pandemic. And now it's my honor to introduce our very dear friend and outgoing DC Bar President, Susie Hoffman. I have two selfish criteria for what makes a good DC Bar President. One is a deep understanding of our need for pro bono volunteers and two is a passion for inspiring others to support legal services. Susie exceeded our most extravagant hopes on both grounds. Not only has Susie been a terrific champion of our work, but she has led by example, volunteering regularly for our clinics and representing her own pro bono client, who you'll hear from shortly. Susie, we cannot thank you enough for all you have done for the Pro Bono Center. Now, please welcome, virtually, Susie Hoffman. Thank you, Becky. Pro bono has been the focus of my legal career for more than 30 years. So when I took the helm of the DC Bar in June 2019, my primary initiative was to champion pro bono work. Naturally, my heart was with the Pro Bono Center. It's been a rewarding year and also a challenging one. I'm proud of what the Pro Bono Center has accomplished, particularly in the midst of the pandemic. And I'm proud of all of you, our generous supporters who make the Pro Bono Center's essential work possible. Despite the uncertain economy and widespread concerns about the future, you renewed your commitment to serving our neighbors. I'm pleased to announce that together, you have contributed almost $800,000 to help the Pro Bono Center continue serving the community. Thank you for your stalwart support in these tough times. I want to especially recognize Kellogg, Hansen, Todd, Figel, and Frederick for pulling out all the stops to raise $145,000 to honor Jeff Kleinberg. 100% of Kellogg, Hansen partners contributed. This is a testament to their esteem for their colleague but also their commitment to serving people who cannot afford a lawyer. The Pro Bono Center leverages your contributions through the power of volunteer attorneys. Because most legal services are provided in person, when the pandemic hit, the staff had to quickly re-envision how to serve clients remotely and in the short term without volunteers. Tonight, you'll hear from the Pro Bono Center staff 
about how they adapted to providing services when the city, government agencies, and the courts shut down to stop the spread of the coronavirus. You'll also hear from a pro bono center client who is very special to me because my firm represented her in her family law case. Please join me in watching a short video featuring three pro bono center lawyers and my client who just learned how to film themselves from home. Enjoy. When the pandemic hit, nobody knew what was to come, how long it would last, or what the long-term effects would be. Immediately, we saw that there was a huge impact on small businesses, so we really had to hit the ground running. We quickly converted our monthly walk-in small business clinic to a weekly virtual format, so small business owners could meet one-on-one -on -one with volunteer lawyers. With our partners, we created webinars for small businesses and nonprofits to help them understand financial assistance programs, unemployment insurance, and paid leave. Now, we're helping organizations renegotiate commercial leases, understand their contracts, and reopen safely. The Pro Bono Center is the only free legal aid service for small businesses in the region. And so far, we've helped more than 1,000 organizations figure out their next steps. That's not just information, that's power. What does it mean to a community to keep their small businesses open? I think it means there's hope. When we found out Superior Court was closing, we had to create a way to serve our clients remotely. We set up a dedicated Landlord and Tenant Resource Center phone line. As more and more calls came in, we enlisted our volunteers and expanded services to include our partner organizations. Now, every day, people who need help can reach an attorney who specializes in landlord and tenant law. Because most callers, they want to know if their housing will be secure through the pandemic. Even though evictions have been on hold, not everyone knows that they are protected. Some callers were facing financial difficulties before COVID-19, but we've also heard from tenants who lost their jobs because of the pandemic. We want tenants to know that even if they can't pay their rent, they likely have defenses. They have a right to demand that their housing is safe and habitable. If it is not, we will file a motion or represent them in a remote hearing. I'm proud that in three months, the Pro Bono Center's housing team has handled almost 500 calls because everyone should have safe, affordable housing. Before the pandemic, the Pro Bono Center was preparing to launch the new Family Law Assistance Network with the DC Affordable Law Firm and the Legal Aid Society. Our goal was to provide free, limited scope services to low-income, pro se, family law litigants on site at DC Superior Court every day. But then the pandemic hit and the court closed. This created an acute crisis for those facing urgent family law issues and presented new challenges to accessing court services. We immediately adapted to the new reality and began staffing a hotline, accepting referrals from the court, helping with same day and emergency needs, and handling remote court hearings. For parents who can't afford a lawyer and are trying to protect their children, being able to pick up the phone and get free legal advice makes a huge difference. And then to have a lawyer who can immediately draft a pleading or file an emergency motion or represent them in court, that's a game changer. The need for our family law services has only been compounded by the impacts of COVID-19. That's why I'm so grateful that in just three months, we have been able to serve over 200 families in the district. When my daughter Anissa was born, her father and I were no longer together. I thought we could come to a custody agreement without having to involve the courts, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. I was feeling scared that I was gonna lose custody of Anissa, but no lawyer would help because no case had been filed yet. But I wanted to be proactive, so I went to the Saturday Advice and Referral Clinic. That day, I met with Susie, a volunteer lawyer, and we worked out a game plan for what to do if I had to go into court. 
As soon as I walked out of the clinic, I immediately felt better. I felt like someone finally heard me. Later, Susie and Jason, an associate at her firm, offered to represent me. Having my lawyers by my side definitely helped my confidence going into court. With their help, we came to an agreement that was fair to both Anissa's dad and me. This opportunity has provided my family a sense of stability I did not have before. I'm grateful that these services were available for those like me who could not afford representation otherwise. The Pro Bono Center is truly making a wonderful impact in our community. Wasn't that inspiring? Now, I have the pleasure of introducing the new president of the DC Bar, Jeffrey Kleinberg. I can think of no better person to lead the bar at this critical time. Jeff has really been leading the bar in some capacity for nearly 20 years. First, as a member and later chair of the bar's Legal Ethics Committee, and most recently, as chair of the Global Legal Task Force. Jeff has long been committed to access to justice and pro bono service. For the past two years, he has been serving on the appellate working group of the Pro Bono Task Force and has volunteered at the Saturday Clinic, along with other pro bono efforts. I have deeply appreciated Jeff's leadership during the past year. He has dealt with challenging issues with composure, diplomacy, and a sensitivity that are remarkable. I have appreciated his support, particularly during the last few months as we navigate the public health crisis and its implications for the bar and the pro bono center. In addition to his extensive experience with the bar, Jeff will bring invaluable qualities to his role as president, wisdom, compassion, and commitment. Please welcome new DC bar president, Jeffrey Kleinberg. Thank you for that warm welcome and introduction, Susie. It's been a great pleasure to work with you this past year, and I am looking forward to your wise counsel during the year ahead. I want to thank the President's Reception Development Committee, particularly my co-chairs, past President Darrell Motley, and my partner and good friend David Frederick for their leadership. The Pro Bono Center will face unprecedented demand for its services in the coming months and years. The energy that all of you devoted to this effort will ensure that thousands of our neighbors get the legal help they need. I also want to thank my colleagues at Kellogg Hansen for contributing so generously. I am overwhelmed by the response and truly humbled by your support. The unprecedented combination of the COVID-19 pandemic and resulting economic meltdown presents an enormous challenge for the provision of legal services to the poor in our city. As we learned during the last recession, people living in poverty suffer the most during an economic downturn. We know the result this time will be fewer jobs and more evictions. We have an extraordinary pro bono culture in the DC bar and we will need to expand it even further in the months ahead. I am acutely aware that the current crisis has placed enormous pressures on many lawyers in this city and that seeking from you all an even greater commitment to pro bono services is a big ask. But people with the fewest resources to weather this recession are encountering arbitrary obstacles when seeking custody of a child, disability benefits to meet their most basic needs, or safe, habitable housing. Having a lawyer can make all the difference. Together, we can meet the need for pro bono help with the amazing capacity and generosity of our DC Bar community. Thank you for joining us tonight and for your continuing support for the DC Bar Pro Bono Center. I hope you will stay safe and stay tuned for the DC Bar's celebration of leadership, which will begin in just a few minutes. Thank you.